Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, respected chair, guests, Assalamu Alaikum, Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. The primary purpose of my talk is to demonstrate that Darwinian evolution is not supported by mathematics. So here is the outline. Randomness and irreducible complexity have direct bearing on Darwinian evolution. So randomness is the lack of pattern, order, timing, predictability information. Irreducible complexity, simply put, is that any irreducible system is non-functional unless all its components are in place. So for example, a very simplified diagram of a computer, all components are essential. If you take away anything, the computer will be non-functional. Similarly, human eye, extremely complex system, but you take away this biochemical substance, which is critical in transmitting visual signal to the brain. It is the brain which sees it, not the retina, not any other part. The eye, in spite of its wonderful anatomical structure will be non-functional. And, and you will see why this is so relevant to Darwinian theory of evolution. So what is Darwinian theory of evolution? It has three components, three aspects. Random mutation, natural selection, and then the claim is the accumulation of some selected heritable traits over time may lead to the emergence of new organs and new species. As you saw from amoeba to drosophila to Darwin, they all came into existence by these three aspects of Darwinian evolution, random mutation, natural selection and accumulation of these traits. If, and there is a big if, if it provides an advantage for survival and reproduction. This is the view of the most biologists today. Most, not all. So now a little bit about the math behind neo-Darwinism. I will talk about three aspects, burden of proof, combination and time, and irreducible complexity. And yes, the angles in the Darwinian triangle do not add up. They do not add up to 180 degrees. So burden of proof, this is what Darwin wrote. Basically, what he is asking is a proof of a negative proposition. But logic, the logic dictates that the burden of proof must be on the Clement. So what do they have to prove? They have to show that there exist at least one organ, or one species, and provide its pathway and show how it went from one stage to another using what Darwin wrote, numerous successive slight modifications. But mathematical analysis shows that micromutations and natural selection fail to produce 
macroevolution. I don't know why it, uh, some lines are not being shown, but this book was written by Fred Hoyle, who was an eminent astrophysicist and fellow of Royal Society. So essentially, he has done what Darwin was asking for but using mathematical analysis. So physics of echolocation in bats. Bats are near blind. They're completely blind in the dark. But they use echolocation, or sonar, in the dark by sending out sound signals and gathering information about their surroundings. They do a complex calculation using this formula called Doppler shift, which uses the velocity of sound in air, velocity of source, velocity of recipient, and emitted and received frequencies of sound. Now, the velocity of sound changes with temperature. For cold weather and hot weather, there's a 20 meter per second difference. But bats have figured that out. Also, this formula is for a very simple case when they are moving in a straight line. If they are not moving in a straight line, the formula is very complex. But bats have figured it out according to Darwinian evolution. The question is this. This irreducibly complex formula for Doppler shift cannot be formed by the neo-Darwinian process of random successive mutation. Why? Because how do you go to this formula? Part by part, variable by variable, plus sign instead of minus sign? How do you come up with the ability to find out the velocity of sound at different temperature. Suppose you are forming a protein with 150 amino acids. You are doing it by random selection. So how many possible proteins you have, 20, multiplied 20, 20, 150 times. That's an astronomical number, 10 to the power 195. And very few of them are stable and useful. But let's assume that one in five is stable and useful. And let's also assume that it takes only 20 seconds to form a uh, protein. So on average, how long would it take to synthesize a useful protein by random selection? Eight multiplied 10 to the power 195 seconds. What does that mean? It's a number, right? For comparison, Life on Earth has existed for four billion years. That is four to the power, 10 to the power nine. Now compare these two numbers. It's impossible to form a protein by random selection in the given amount of time we have. The universe is only 14.5 billion years old. Life is only four billion years old. This book was written by Leslie Valiant, who is a Turing Laureate, which is the highest award, the Nobel Prize of Computer Science. He is underestimating the time, but still, he said it will take a million times as long. And then he goes on to say something very, very interesting, is that one is not performing a service to science if one pretends to have a solution. And he is talking about neo-Darwinian theory of evolution. 
One pretends to have a solution when one does not. And this statement of Professor Valiant echoes with Hazrat Khalifatul Masih's fourth statement in the book, Revelation, Rationality, Knowledge, and Truth about the requirement of time. So there are four views of evolution, creationist view and creationist view is one extreme and neo-Darwinian view is at the other extreme and the Ahmadi Muslim view and the dissenting scientists view fall in between. So Hazur writes, the Quran speaks of creation in a step-by-step -step progressive stages. So we do accept the fact of evolution. The question is how it took place, the mechanism of evolution. The Hazur quotes the Holy Quran, says verse 96, chapter 7, call upon the powers you associate with God and combine all you have against me and give me no time. Hosea writes that this verse implies that mere ideas cannot create. It can only apply to the modern idea of natural selection, which is claimed to be responsible for the evolution of life, provided it is given enough time. It has four billion years and it cannot even create a single protein, tiny, puny, 150 amino acid protein. There is an emerging voices of dissenting scientists who question Darwinian theory, and these two websites are very informative on this subject. We know all about creationism, they believe that about 5,000 years ago, God created Adam and Eve, and all living creatures in the present forms, Adam and Eve were ancestors of all humans. Some most fundamentalist Christians and some non Ahmadi Muslims also hold this view. A book written by Harun Yehya talks about the creationism. And most of the criticism, when you criticize Darwinian theory, the criticism is that, oh, you are a creationist. That is their, <laughs> their response always. So in summary, the neo-Darwinian theory can explain micro-mutations, but macro-mutation, that is the creation of a new species or new organs, is an entirely different thing. And I have enumerated uh, many uh, problems they have. I'm not going to read them out. I suppose my time is running out. So I will only read the last bullet, which is that, so they have uh, stories. There are stories about peppered moths, finches, beaks, word pictures, and hypothet hypothetical scenarios but they cannot stand for evidence. Jazakallah.